this is my story. I finally feel like I can talk about this particular time in my life and appreciate what it took. I'm not on mobile, so feel free to criticize my grammar. Although English is not my first language, so temper the criticism. Warning, this is a very long post. TL, Dr. Abuse has made my first year of high school a waking nightmare. Asshole vice principal was the final straw. I decided to face my fears and took them all down. Vice principal gets fired, most of my abusers get a decade plus in prison. Background. This pro revenge took place when I was in high school in the mid 2000s, a time in my country when there was much public outcry over bullying slash hazing in boarding schools. A couple of students in different schools had died from injuries resulting from bullying. Other schools were rioting and burning shit. They were under increased scrutiny. It was a whole thing. Personally, my life in high school was not fun. I was a fat boy with very low self-esteem going into my first year. The bullying I experienced quickly led to a depression. I was prone to self-harm and recklessness and a bit of suicidal ideation. The thing that made high school particularly nightmarish though was the sexual abuse. Low-key comments about my sexuality from this group of about 5 boys in 4th form. They called me and my best friend gay. The social stigma associated with homosexuality here is really extreme. These boys would stalk and terrorize me. They left threatening notes under my sheets. We are going to fuck you up for being a fucking gay. We are going to fucking rape you, etc. So I had only one close friend who knew what was going on. Ironically, after an entire term of convincing everyone that I was gay, this same group began sexually abusing me. I'll spare you the details, but my first year in high school was the worst time of my life. But you're not here for my sad story, so moving on. Sometime in the middle of the term, the vice principal, VP, of our school was changed due to the aforementioned public backlash from the bullying scandals. The previous VP was a decent man, but the new VP was not. He came with a well-earned reputation of being unnecessarily harsh, dishing out suspensions and expulsions like candy on Halloween. The last straw, a few weeks after the new VP came in, and I'm having an incredibly shitty week that is really battering my mind. Yes, the bullying and sexual abuse was still going on. Now, every Friday night, a group of kids used to climb through a window into the computer lab and play video games. The windows had bars on them, but a slim person could fit through. I'm not slim by any definition, unless the definition is fat. Among this group of kids was this troublemaker dude in my class in my dorm with the same common name. Turns out, the VP had confused the two of us, and I was the one who was in his crushes. That Friday, the kids were caught. Some of them, including my namesake, managed to escape. The VP was called in, and the students who were caught snitched. Security was sent to the dorms to bring the other culprits. Kumi being woken up at 3am in the morning, and dragged to back quote the scene of the crime, to endure a beating for something I hadn't done. Corporal punishment was tacitly legal then slash now. My explanation that there is clearly no way for me to fit through the window were met with more canings. What really pissed me off was that the VP had us bring our belongings to his office at night for an inspection with the excuse of searching for stolen computer equipment. He came across my very private journal, and like the dick he was, he proceeded to ridicule me for having a diary in front of the teachers, watchmen, and the students I was bundled with. It didn't help matters that I broke down and cried in front of them. I don't think I have ever felt such humiliation in my life before. The following morning, we were suspended for two weeks. Two weeks later, my parents took me back to school. I had only told them of the mistaken identity that I suspected and the wrongful accusation. They already knew about the bullying. I didn't tell them about the VP going through my diary or the sexual stuff. I was still writhing in humiliation. The VP, being the absolute bunghole that he was, had convinced himself that I was the ringleader of this group of boys, again, mistaken identity, and thus deserved extra punishment. He ordered me to clear out a large patch of weeds and overgrown grass between the rugby pitch and the hockey field, about the size of a football field, using only a slasher. Just as I'm about to head out, 
it starts raining, and it's the middle of July, so much cold, temperatures regularly dip to below 10 degrees Celsius at night. So instead of going to the field, I head to class to wait out the rain. A few minutes later, the VP barged in furious, interrupting the geography lesson. He proceeded to tear me a new one, even mentioning my private journal, and then he threatened to expel me if I left the field before I finished my punishment. Mind you, this was one of the best schools in our region. It had actually been my first choice. He then he proceeded to cane me again, just to make his point stick. At this point I just broke. All of this punishment was due to something that I had not done. I was completely innocent, but this is wipe just couldn't listen. The ridicule, the humiliation, the bullying, and the abuse all just came to a head at that point, and I decided to just fuck it all to hell. So I walked out into the rain, slasher in hand, with not even a sweater. This was about 4 in the afternoon. I never returned. I think the VP never really expected me to complete the punishment. But then, I doubt he had ever met someone who decided they had no more fucks left to give either. My initial plan was to crucify him with his own words. Dusk fell with me cold and drenched ripping up ferns from the ground. By midnight, I was shivering and crying uncontrollably and it was too dark to see shit. I still persevered and started blindly cutting the grass, driven by this mad desire to just hurt. I really didn't care who I hurt. Sure, a part of my motivation was that, if I did get sick out here, the VP would be in a fuckload of trouble, but there was another part of me that was just like, fuck it, life sucks anyways. By midnight, I was too cold to continue. I ran out of energy and just sat down under a tree. Towards dawn I was so cold from the rain and the wind that my shivers began reducing. It was impossible for me to sleep. The teachers finally found me there a couple of hours after dawn. Apparently, the teacher on duty had found my desk empty during morning study time between 4.30 and 6 a.m. When he asked where I was, it came about that I had not been in bed the previous night either. He then called the VP and other teachers who began searching the school and they finally found me in the field. The pro revenge, yeah I. It's finally here. I don't know much about what happened immediately after, I was so out of it. I do remember the teachers rushed me to the school nurse, who immediately recommended I be taken to the hospital. I spent a week there due to complications, pneumonia, and a very expensive week it was, all on the school's dime. My parents were pissed as fuck, and I couldn't blame them. The school's board of governors convened after my parents contacted them. The days before my parents and I were called in to speak before the board, I had the idea to just face my fears and put everything out in the open. I was just done with that school and everybody there. So on that day, in front of a group of musty old men in the boardroom, I finally shed my burden. I told them everything, my only motivation being to bury the piece of shit VP and my tormentors. I don't think I've ever done anything that scary before. From the mistaken identity, the suspension, the punishment in the rain, the threat to expel me if decided to seek shelter, and the crown jewel the bullying and the sexual abuse, I laid it all out. I knew that would definitely get their attention. The board called my best friend, who backed me up. The VP was in no position to win a he said they said contest with us at that moment. The VP was fired that day. A few days later, a zero tolerance policy on bullying was announced. I think the board was acutely afraid of finding themselves in the news for all the wrong reasons. They didn't want their school to be one of back quote those schools, despite the fact that it was one of the worst. Over the holidays my friend told me that things got really serious after that. People didn't know why, but suddenly, any act of bullying was met with immediate and unconditional expulsion. As for the boys who had been terrorizing me, they were arrested. My dad went to the police with the threatening notes I had been receiving all year long. The school board supported us in this, on the condition that we, my parents and I, do not take the story to the media. I was happy with that arrangement. I had no desire to be the face of male rape victims. We had a few meetings with an investigator from the public prosecutor's office. 
A couple of months later, the office reached out, told us that the boys had plead guilty. One of them got off scot-free cause his dad was some senior army guy, corruption smh. Three of them got 10 years each. The last one got 18. The topping, they were all in their fourth and final year. They got arrested, just as they were about to sit for their national exams to go to university. Their lives are ruined, and I have absolutely no remorse for them. <laughs> Background. So I worked for company A for almost a decade, that had a small team consisting of 10 people, doing commissioned work for businesses in my city. The owner treated us like family, knowing that we worked long and hard days, sometimes up to 60 hours in a week. He paid us better than expected, bonuses and perks he negotiated with businesses that commissioned our work, even gave the whole company a week off paid when his son was getting married, so we could attend it. We had our squabbles like any other family, and things weren't always bright and perfect, but this is to show how nice owner treated his employees. And didn't screw me over. After working there 4 years, the manager position came open. Since by then I was one of the most senior workers with company A, so I thought I would apply, which had a few others interested to do as well. I didn't get the position, mainly because, despite my experience at company A, I didn't have a business administration degree. Someone who worked for owner did, so he got it. Realizing the education I would have to get, and the demand of this job, I thought long and hard and concluded that, if I wanted to go anywhere in life, I would have to get that degree. Coming right of high school, to work for company A was great, but if I wanted to do something more I would have to go to university. I talked to the owner, and gave my two weeks notice. When I explained what I wanted to do, and why, he understood that I was trying to make something of myself. This all becomes relevant later, I promise. Going to university, I found that I had tuition covered through government grants, but not things like food, rent, etc. So I looked around and eventually found work at company B. Company B was a retail store, with a bigger staff than I had been used to, somewhere around 50 employees, but had such a huge employee turnaround, that it was scary at times. They dealt with a wider range of goods from groceries to very expensive items. They had a certain niche clientele that they could order items for and catered to. I ended up working part time in their warehouse and answered to the warehouse supervisor who answered to the manager. There were other supervisors for other parts of the store but for this only the sales supervisor is relevant. Skip forward 7 years. In that time I got my Bay degree and worked at company B the whole time, going from part time to full and eventually applied for the warehouse supervisor position. I was interviewed, got the job, been supervisor for months when the manager and I hired K as a warehouse clerk. K isn't the one to get the revenge, but she played a crucial part in the revenge. Then bitch gets hired. Bitch started out as a cashier, working quickly up the chain and brown nosing as many co-workers as possible, including the manager. When a sales rep went on maternity leave, Bitch quickly jumped at the chance to work in sales, and ended up permanently being a part of that team than the sales supervisor soon after. Me and Bitch got along like oil and water. We butted heads over things constantly, she would tell the manager all the small things that I did, but called me a snitch when I reported the issues she was causing. She would badmouth me and my warehouse staff, talk over me at meetings, and try to take credit for my ideas. She openly told co-workers that I was the cause of many issues and couldn't wait for me to leave. Oh, and she was never at fault. It would be the customer's fault, my fault, the delivery driver's fault, another co-worker's fault, etc. There were times when we got together well, but far and few between. I get fired. So one day, a very, and I mean very, expensive ring set, over $5,000 I found out later, ordered by one of our customers, comes in. Years ago I set up a procedure for any type of jewelry, so that it will not get lost or stolen. The last step is, once we have done everything with it in the warehouse, we take it to the office and have someone put it in the safe immediately. This particular time, I was the one who received the ring so, once going through the procedure, told K that I was taking it to the office. 
the only one available who had the combination to the safe was bitch. I asked her if she could open the safe. She looked at me, looked at the jewelry box in my head, then said, put it down here on my desk, I'll put it away once I'm done this email. Keep in mind that me and the bitch had had a serious spat over something earlier that day and I generally didn't feel like being close to her if I could help it. So I never saw her put it in the safe myself. The next day, I get a call from the manager to come to the office. I head there to find manager, bitch, and the hour consultant they pull in when some real shit hits the fan. Manager tells me that Cedring said have disappeared. I tell them the procedure I followed and last I saw them was with bitch. Manager tells me that bitch checked the box and that said box was empty. Manager then pulls the box out. Sure enough, the box the rings were in was indeed empty. I swear to manager that the rings were inside when I checked them before given to bitch. At this point, it's my word against hers. By stroke of bad luck, the in-store video recorder had broken down days before the incident so there was no way to verify what happened. We all know someone has to take the blame for this, and that's when bitch strikes, saying that it was my fault, since it was last seen in my hands. Manager asks if this is true, then I realize that, yes, I was indeed the last person to touch the thing, and I never actually saw bitch pick up the box. Bitch gives me the look of that screamed gotcha. Manager and the hour consultant ask us both to leave. After what seemed like forever, I get called in. Manager tells me that, since I was responsible for the rings at the time and now are lost, they would be firing me. But, since they had no proof as to whether I stole the rings or not, they wouldn't press charges, which scared the crap out of me as this was the first time I heard of them thinking this. I go back to the warehouse, tell Kay and the other warehouse clerks just what happened, grabbed my personal belongings, and left that day. After a couple weeks of trying to get my head around what happened and weighing my options, I decide my first priority is to try to get some sort of job and consider it lucky if I get a job flipping burgers with the bad rep when they ask company B I call the owner of company A to get a good reference from them and explain what happened and why I was calling only to get the shock of a lifetime. The manager position was about to be open. The guy who I lost the position to was retiring soon, due to complicated health reasons. Owner had kept tabs on me while at university and understood when I didn't immediately come back to him, but with a golden opportunity like this, he wanted me back, and I wasn't going to say no. I dive into my new job I originally wanted with an owner I enjoyed working for. I thought, then and there, everything would be behind me, not knowing it would come back, not to bite me, but to pay dividends. The revenge. K side. This I found out after bitch's reckoning. After I was fired, K knew she had to do something about bitch. K knew that I wouldn't lose or steal something like the rings. But also knew that, without proof, bitch would deny that she did it and have K in her crosshairs to attack next. So, after talking with her husband, she hatched a plan. She started hanging out with bitch, telling her things, like I'm so glad he's gone, or wish he had been fired much earlier. Bitch, feeling high from getting rid of one of her thorns in her side, soaked it all in, and after a couple weeks, invited K and K's husband, from now on KH, for drinks at her place with her and bitch's husband, BH. Months pass. K and KH do things regularly together with bitch and BH, including drinking on weekends and couple related events. When together, K would occasionally badmouth me and bitch would agree. Finally, after over a year of playing nice, when K and KH were over at bitches for one of their drinking parties, K randomly badmouthed me, mentioning the rings in passing. Then bitch says something that K was waiting for. I wanted those rings, so I stole them. K, hearing this, asks for more details. KH looks at her tries to wave her off with one hand, then gives up when bitch keeps talking. That day, bitch had stopped writing her email and was going to put the rings in the safe. The safe was open and she was about to put the rings away when bitch had an idea. See, as mentioned above, bitch wanted me gone from company B she also wanted those rings. She also knew that the cameras weren't working. 
She figured that she could pocket the rings, tell the manager they were missing, and spin it, so I would take the blame. K then asks where are the rings now, and bitch, being too drunk, and not seeing a reason not to brag, not only tells her, but shows her where they are in her room. All while KH had been recording the whole conversation on his phone, the hand waving, was him saying he started recording. K gives a copy of the recording to manager the next workday. Police are called immediately, bitch is arrested, and her house is raided. They find the rings. K and KH give the recording and testimonies to police. Bitch's reckoning has begun. Revenge. My side. I get a call from the prosecutor's office after bitch is arrested and charged with theft over $5,000, among other things. He wants me to testify about what she did to me. I didn't skip a beat in saying yes. Fast track to the trial. Prosecutor has me, K, and KH testify and plays the recording of bitch admitting that she stole them. Her attorney tries to throw out the case saying that K got bitch deliberately drunk, but judge didn't buy it since there was proof she drank all the time. Judge was lenient and gave her 5 years in prison, which she yelled was unfair, but I personally thought she got off easy. Meanwhile, as the trial was happening, I was talking with a lawyer to sue bitch for setting me up like she did. We were also going to sue company B for wrongful termination, but they settled the day they got notice of the lawsuit and knew they would lose. Bitch wasn't so lucky. They tried some trickery by having BH divorce her, and he received everything in the divorce, but my lawyer added him into the lawsuit as well. My lawyer asked over all for $3,500 for emotional distress, back pay from when I was fired until I started up with company A again and legal fees. And now, you are wondering where the metaphoric cherry is on this story? Well, recently we had someone leave company A, so we were hiring someone to replace them. Owner was going over the resumes and set up interviews for the job this week. Lo and behold, bitch was one of the people to apply, but he didn't know that. I looked at the resume, was about to trash it, but then smiled. Owner set up the interview. She came in at her slotted time, looking to brown nose her way through. Then she saw me. I smiled an evil smile. She went white. All I said was, ah, bitch, how are you? Remember me? A deer in the headlight look from her. I look at her as you may and say I'm sorry, I do not think you will be a good fit for our company. Thank you for applying. She said not one word and left. Edit, I forgot to mention that it had been almost 6 years between her last job, company B, and her coming into the interview. Edit 2, thank you everyone for the medals. Yes, I kept in contact with K and KH since leaving. I've told them about this post and the respect people had here for them. My first job after college many years ago was working for an office supply company. Started as a summer job and got extended. This was the kind of company that, when a big firm moves into a new building, they would roll in with interior architects, designers, electrical workers, it, gardener, and everything needed to make it ready for business. My job was to coordinate the it parts for the bigger clients. If clients needed special solutions, they billed my time at $600 hour. I was astonished by this rate, but on a multi-million dollar sign dollar sign bill, this would be a small part. The top boss had a really beautiful assistant. He clearly liked her a lot. And I started to hang out with her. Top boss typically wanted to go to lunch with his assistant and other managers she would rather be with me, but could not tell her boss this. And with some excuse, she often met up with me for lunch. She was smart, funny, and a blast to be with. We all had company cars. The sales department had at this time received a database of products from some vendors, and it was not compatible with their database. I was asked if it was possible to import it all. Found out fast I could do it in a few days time. I told them I would do it, but and would take a few weeks, since I had to do it when I got open time slots. One weekend. Some friends of the beautiful assistant invited her to a party in a city 10 hours away. She invited me to come with, and we both asked for Monday and Tuesday off, since festivities was planned until Sunday evening. 
She got an okay, and I was first told yes by my boss, then, I suspect overridden by big boss, the okay was changed to a no. There was really no reason for denying me this, so I suspected unfair play, but the girl was more important to me than the job, so I decided to go anyway. Before I go, I tell sales department boss, he will get his database updated next week, and also a program to import future updates from suppliers. He was very happy about this, as this has been a big problem, and they had some big orders waiting for the tools I was writing. Weekend comes, and we take her company car, and go. On Monday, boss calls, and I tell him I cannot come in before Wednesday. He tells me he had okayed the days off, but big boss overrode him, and denied it, and now big boss is pushing on him to fire me, unless I come in immediately. I cannot, because I'm not anywhere near. Wednesday morning, I show up to work, and my desk it cleaned out, and I'm told I had been fired. My boss tells me he is sorry, but it was demanded by the big boss, and most of my colleagues knows what is going on, and is pretty much on my side. Now load up my stuff, and I drive my company car to an attorney. He tells me, 1, until I have a written termination notice, I'm still employed, and being paid, and also that. 2. The way I had been fired, had broken a bunch of laws. He writes a letter to the company, that he plans to take them to court. Turns out the company, is in the middle of being bought out, and that they really did not want a lawsuit, while going during this process, so a top manager with a company attorney from a headquarter, flies out to resolve. They are really pissed off at local big boss for breaking laws when firing me. I think he was mostly pissed off at me for taking his precious assistant away for the weekend and acted irrational. I agree to settle for $50,000. After the agreement is signed, the local big boss tells me he never wants to see me or have me do any work for him. When the sales department manager finds out I was fired, he is quite upset. He calls me and tells me how sorry he is and asks if I can finish the work for him. It was not much to do, and I would have finished it for free, but I tell him, I very much would like to, but the big boss had specifically told me I could not do any work for them, so I could not, unless I got in writing from big boss, that he retracted what he said, and that he would allow me to be paid as a consultant. He tells me he would talk to big boss, and get back to me point it takes a long time, but after two days I get the mail. I heard there had been some serious yelling at a beating between sales debt manager and big boss. Anyway, Hay agreed, and I billed them 40 hours to finish the tools and set it all up, and then 40 hours for the conversion, all at the usual rate of...